Hey, this is Latif Mikado, and you're listening to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, where I take some time each night to try and reflect on the freestyle scene, where it is, where it's going, and try to figure out how to sustain it, not just for future generations to enjoy, but also to benefit. So sit back, relax, and let's talk some freestyle. Hey, welcome everyone. It's Latif and welcome to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast. And this is episode 93. Um, Thursday night. Uh, cool, yet crisp. I'm outside. Um, it's not as warm as it normally is. It's, it's been the last few times, but warm enough where if I throw it on a hoodie, I'm actually good. Um, everything's cool. You know, you know, I think the concern for me is building as we go along the situation. It's not even about me. It's about, I think I'm more concerned with my kids as most of us will be, you know, a lot of times we tend to be more concerned with other people than ourselves. And that's uh, called being human, something that uh, uh, it's a characteristic, a characteristic of being human thinking about other people, you know, wishing everyone else well, you know. We know we can withstand ourselves individually, but sometimes we're not sure what others can withstand, whether it's physically or mentally. So, but um, I still push and try to focus and try to stay, um, try to stay positive with everything. Um, You know, it's it's sad when we see, you know, people losing their lives because of this, you know. So, but uh, you know, people lose their lives on so many things every single day, from drug addiction to AIDS to cancer to obesity. You know, this, however, is something that. Um, it has no demographic attached to it. It can go after the totally healthy, the black, the white, the straight, the, the rich, the poor, the celebrities, the unknowns. It lingers and we don't see it. We don't know where it's at. It's hard to function and not touch things. It's hard to function in this world and not be around people. It's not, it's not possible for us to walk around and not breathe, not inhale. And those are all the, all the ways that this thing can be contracted. So it's scary. I just pray that we all, we get through this quickly. This is when the world needs to step up. This is when the leaders need to be like, okay, we can deal with everything else, but this we can't. You know, so other than that, uh, same old, same old, um, a lot of writing, really trying to bust through this. I have some of the ideas I want to start working on. So I'm just trying to knock this stuff out. Um, tomorrow we might have to make a, a store run, grab a few essentials to get us through at least another week or so. Trying to be as conservative as possible. Trying not to go crazy. Definitely don't want to hoard. Um, I don't know what the situations are in the store right now. I mean, the last time when Angel went in, she said it wasn't crazy, you know? They had pretty much everything you needed. Um, So there's no reason for people to start hoarding stuff. Uh, What else? That's pretty much, you know, it with that, you know? Uh, Work-wise, it seems like I'm getting calls. People just trying to shop, I mean, and price it. And it feels weird because when they call, it's like, (laughs) it's like, why are you calling? (laughs) Why are you calling me about shows? And But I have to think, you know, the world still has to continue on. So 
I don't want to sidetrack that. And I want to make sure that I service people and I, I uh, communicate with, with the customers and my buyers and my promoters just like if everything was normal because things will get normal. And once things get normal, it's not like we have to, now we have to pick up. No, we don't have to pick up. We have to jump back into where we left off. Shit's got to be on, on turbo, you know? Like, we, there is no, we've, we got massive uh, catching up to do. And, uh, you know, it gives us, puts a lot of things in perspective. We start to think about a lot. And, um, you know, take things for granted. You know, little things like this, like going to the store and going to, you know, meeting with people and going out, you know. I mean, I'm, I'm a big advocate against going out in public. You know, I, I'm with everyone else. Stay home. Let's let, let the world stay home and try to, uh, to manage this so we can get uh, the world back to normal, you know. Um, we don't hit Santana over the head with it. She knows what's going on. Um, we don't do it to, to the level that we are scaring her because it's not like she has the dependence, the independence to go out and just go hang out or do whatever, you know? No, we control all of that. So she's with us. She's indoors. Thank God for, you know, things like TikTok because she loves to do her TikToks. Um, and that keeps her creative and it keeps her excited and it gives her a reason to get dressed and change her hairstyle and, you know, so thank God for that. Thank God for social media that we're all able to, I mean, what more social distancing than we need than, uh, than to be able to communicate through social media, you know, until they say, oh yeah, be careful um, who you have as friends. You might get a virus, you know, that, that's, that would be some, that would be some messed up stuff. I mean, for real, like <laughs> God forbid, please. <laughs> But, uh, I mean, thank God we do have social media and we do have texting. And I, I text and communicate with people that I'm concerned about every single day. So, um, so I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful that we have this. <clears throat> and uh, that's it. You know, I, I, I'm looking forward to getting back, to getting back on the groove. And, and I got a lot I want to I wanna accomplish, you know, what's... I mean, a lot of you guys who are listening to me are more or less around my age. You guys are coming from the freestyle genre. And, um, you know, some of us are retiring. But you know what? When you look at it, we're still very young. And we won't realize how young we are until 10 years pass. Once 10 years pass, then we'll look back and say, so if you're in your 50s now and you get into your 60s, you'll look back and see how young your 50s actually was. When you're 70, you'll be like, wow, that was 20 years ago. I was pretty young, you know? Because at 70, you'll be feeling good. You'll still be feeling fine, you know? You'll be able to do things that, you know, that you probably can't even do now, <laughs> you know? I expect my health and my weight and everything to, to get in order. Uh, my health is fine. I don't have issues. Uh, any issues I have are weight-related because I gained this weight, but... But that's just like, okay, bones creak a little bit when I move and, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I drop a pencil. I stare at it for about three minutes before I finally <laughs> bend down to pick it up. Or I call Santana from the other room. Santana, come here. She comes all the way down and uh, just so she can um, uh, come and pick up my pencil, you know. So it's pretty, it's pretty funny. But, um, yeah, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll realize that in 20 years when, you know, how young we actually are now and how much opportunities we still have at this point in our lives. And I try to make that stuff very clear to myself. And it's me convincing myself because I know it's true, you know. So a lot of us, we get to a certain age. And we mentally start to check out. And that's what we need to eliminate. That's what we need to stop doing. We need to stop mentally checking out. 
oh, I'm too old for this. Oh, I'm too old for that. No, man. We're not. We're actually pretty young to do quite a bit, you know. You know, I, I made a... I put it through my head this way. And I, I think I brought this up once before. We look at ourselves as being, you know, okay, I'm 53. So let's say 50. Let's just round it out. By, time, by the time I really re- realized what I wanted to do, okay, check this out. By the time I really realized what I wanted to do, I was about 25 years old, okay? About 25 years old. Might have been even a little older than that, but I'm going to say 25 because that's pretty right. That's that's I'm, that's pretty much on point. So think about it like this. So if I finally figured out what I wanted to do at 25, and then I bust my ass for the last 25 years, had pretty pretty decent success, happiness, was able to do a lot of things. Okay, down 50, and I'm thinking, okay. Time to check out, time to chill, relax, retire, change course, stay home more, babysit the the grandkids. But think about it like this, that's only 25 years from 25 to 50. That's only 25 years, okay? Now we go from 50 right now to 20, in 25 years from now is only 75 years, Now, look at some of the successful people who are out there today, whether they're actors, they're business people, politicians. These people are in their late 60s, late 70s, going into 80s, still pretty vibrant. So a lot of us that are in our 50s, If you thought you lived your life the last 25 years, no. We got now another 25 years to live. And when I say live, meaning to dream, to hustle, to come up with, try to do new shit, to try to, even if you need to change careers or you need to change a course, you could do it. You could do it because we're not going to realize how young 75 is until we're 80. Or like my aunt right now, she's what, 90, I thought she was 96, but I think she's 93. So if I had told her 93 to her 75, it's young. How crazy is that? So then you could reach 75, maybe even 80, and then if you want to chill out and play old guy or old girl, then it makes sense. But in 25 years, we can accomplish a lot. We could change our course. We could change our life. Listen, I think, um, was it Warren Buffett? He became a millionaire, like, real late in life. I wish I had the stats. I, I, don't, I don't have the stats. But if you look at it, he became a millionaire pretty late in life. And he has no regrets. He has no regrets. You know, some people get, become wealthy when they're really young, you know, they're in their 30s or whatever, and that's beautiful, and they probably live a wonderful life, but maybe, maybe not. Maybe some of these people who are living like this are, you know, missed out on the the kids growing up, or because of the money, they, they ended up not being loyal to their significant or other because the opportunities were just thrown at them. Or maybe they never got married at all. Maybe they never had children at all. You know, one of my greatest things is that I had kids. I will always be proud of that. That's one thing I will never regret. I had kids. What my kids do for the world now, that's on them. When I had kids, they were good kids. They're still good kids. They're bumpy. They're both bumpy. We were all bumpy. We were all a little bumpy here and there until we find ourselves. But that's what makes the world a beautiful place. 
you know life has to have these ups and downs and these little zigzags they gotta have them it's what makes the roller coaster fun you can't ride the same roller coaster all the time it will it'll be boring you can't know every twist and turn it becomes boring you can only watch a movie a certain amount of times because after a while you know when the bad guy's gonna gonna pop out so it's not scary it's not exciting you know who's gonna get killed so you're not you're not worried about them anymore So, you know, life has to have its own twists and turns and ups and downs. It has to have its own surprises, some good, some bad. You know, we pray that we don't, we don't experience any tragedies. And tragedies like what we're going through now, all of us, with our world. It's a tragedy. And we, we you know, we, we always pray that we don't experience this. But when we do, now we have to come together have to come together, you know, as a, as humanity and, um, and tackle it, you know? But I, I talk to a lot of people in my genre, especially. A lot of people are uh, retiring or people who, they, they just seem, you know, some of them, I, 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 I know a lot of police officers that are retired now. They retire young. Um, they were in the military, then they were on the force for 15 years or whatever, and then they retired. And so many of them are not satisfied. It's like life passed them by, and they didn't really grasp it. I don't mean life meaning, oh, I went on vacation, I went to Greece, so I was able to go to Africa and ride an elephant, you know. That's cool. I, went, I jumped off of a cliff. I went skydiving, I went scuba diving. Okay, that's beautiful, but that's not for everybody. That doesn't excite everybody. I love the fact that people do it. I could go on YouTube and watch people do it, <laughs> you know? But I wish I had that nerve to jump off of a cliff, and but I don't. <laughs> but I'm not gonna lose sleep over it, you know? Um, it just, it's just not for me. I'd rather experience my journeys differently. You know, I think that's important for all of us. I like to experience my journeys just having the freedom to come up with new ideas. And, you know, people ask me, somebody asked me the other day, what do I um, consider success? Successful. Like, does it have to be, do you... Is there a price on success? Do you, oh yeah, success means a million dollars in the bank or a billion dollars in the bank. Or success means a mansion or a Ferrari or the ability to see the world. You know, some people will determine that success and they're not right, they're not wrong. We all have something in our lives that how we what we consider success. How do we measure our own success? Success might be raising a healthy and happy family. That might be a success. Success might be making it to retirement and now living you know, comfortably, very conservative. You know? Success could be, you know, uh, owning, th owning things that you think or would define success. Me, success? It's weird. I don't think you've probably never heard this and then and it might be hard to understand, but success to me is the freedom to be creative. I know it sounds weird. Let me break it down for you. So you understand what I mean. Okay? In this world, there's a lot of creative people, whether they're writers, actors, uh, photographers, filmmakers, um, artists, singers, uh, 
Um, but a lot of people cannot. A lot of people cannot participate in the craft that they love so much because they have to work or because they don't have the time. In other words, they don't have the freedom to do what makes them the most happy. Happiness sometimes has nothing to do with money. Someone can sit down and maybe sculpture or you see artists who paint canvas, paint, brushes. They sit there and they paint and they can do it for hours upon hours, year after year. And guess what? Not make a penny, not make a penny doing it, but they won't quit. That's true passion. That's what passion is. Passion is when you can do something forever and not make money and not worried about making money if you're driven you know some people if there's no financial gain they quit somebody might say yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna start painting and see if I sell these these uh, paintings and then if they can't sell them they quit they never paint again that's not passion maybe their passion is making money So what happens is they continue to do different things, you know? But you see, we all got bills and we all got to eat. And a lot of us got people we have to take care of. So how much time can you put into that passion? So sometimes all we want is the freedom to be creative or the freedom to explore our, our passions. How's that? That might even be better. What is success? The freedom to explore your passion. We all have it. We all have a passion. See, the key is, is to try to find it early. Sometimes you don't. Some people don't find their true passions, believe it or not, until they retire. They retire. Sometimes the passion was in them like they didn't know why whenever they saw a painting on the wall, it kind of grabbed them. Or when they saw a magazine with an advertising a painting or something, it grabbed them. And then all of a sudden, they retire and they say, hey, I'm gonna pick up a hobby. They pick up a hobby and they go and they pick up a canvas and they pick up some some paints. Next thing you know, they're, they're glued. They're glued to it, they can't stop. They're they're investing all their money into canvas and painting and brushes. Okay? Now, if they have the means to survive, if they have a regular check coming in and the bills are being paid and the rent or the mortgage, oh, they're living, they're living. And they're able to just paint and just explore that passion to the end. And, I mean, how much... How much more happiness can you ask for? Think about that. Sounds strange. Not everyone will get it. There has to be something that you're passionate about, truly passionate. You know, sometimes we have to stop what we're doing because we got to go make some money. We got bills to pay. You know? I know people who are into, you know, into cars. People who love cars, man. They just got, you know, if it was up to them, they'll collect cars. They just love it. It's their passion, you know. Or they love working on cars. They love fixing them, you know. And that they'll fix them for free if they could. They just enjoy doing it. That's a great passion because... If you love to fix cars, (laughs) you can make some pretty decent money, you know? But when we go into things like the arts, singing, painting, writing, dancing, any of that stuff, that becomes a a different ball game. So it's a little different. Uh, Because the money's not always there. 
yet you can't stop. You have this passion. You passion for it, you know? So, anyway, I just want to leave you guys with that. Something I was thinking about today. Uh, this podcast, I'm passionate about it. I haven't stopped. I love doing it. I look forward to doing it. I'm not getting paid for it. I'm not charging anybody. I don't have the donation button open. They give me an op- opportunity, put a donation button. I don't want it. I don't want a donation button on it. I just want to do it, and I'm hoping that people listen. Doesn't have to be a lot of people. Could be five people. Unfortunately, it's more than five, a little bit more than five, but um, I'm cool with that. So, anyway, guys, listen, uh, that's it for tonight. Uh, Have a great night. Take it easy. Be safe. Stay home. God bless. And good night, freestyle. Before I lay me down to sleep, I pray to hear a freestyle beat. For if I die before I wake, I hope to make it to the break.